Hey, Internet, it's Colorful Artie, and welcome back to the Mega Man Anniversary Collection. We saw we were doing this when we played Mega Man 3, so I think you guys know what time it is. It's time to play Mega Man 4. And first, I want to make sure the options are all set, so nothing uh, weird is here. Gameplay options. Nav mode. I do like that, and it really doesn't help you. It just makes the uh, menu screens a bit easier to maneuver. Normal difficulty, and yeah, start with free lives. I'm not giving myself any unfair advantages. Alright, let's start. New game. There we go, Mega Man 4. So this is an interesting Mega Man game. Not nearly as good as the first three, but it's still fun. Capcom presents... 2000X AD. Household robots rock and roll were created by master robot designer Dr. Light and were enjoying their peaceful days. Then one day, the industrial robots all over the world went on a rampage and the world fell into total chaos. Ooh, I like the NES, uh, graphic explosions. Dr. Light quickly realized that mad scientist Dr. Wily was behind the nefarious deed, but he didn't know what to do. Of course it was Wily. It's always Wily. Or is it? Rock, having a strong sense of justice, volunteered to be converted into a fighting robot. <laughs> Thus, the super robot known as Mega Man was born. That's right, Mega Man used to be a janitor. I love this train scene. Mega Man shattered Dr. Wily's plans three times, and world peace has been maintained so far. But history repeats itself. So that was the first free game summed up in one sentence. <laughs> oh yeah. This is where the Mega Man series just really starts showing its colors as to how capable it was. Dr. Cossack, a mysterious scientist, has invented eight powerful robots and sent them after Mega Man. That's right, it's not Wily this time, it's Dr. Cossack. Mega Man starts for the battle again, this time equipped with the powerful new Mega Buster. Alright, Mega Man 4, or Mega Man IV. <laughs> Anyways, game start. So yeah, instead of the Dr. Wily symbol in the middle, we've got Dr. Cossack symbol. And eight new Robot Masters. Rain Man, Dive Man, Skull Man, Pharaoh Man, Bright Man, Toad Man, Drill Man, and Dust Man. So, I was trying to figure out which one to do first, and I think I want to do Pharaoh Man first. Pharaoh Man is one of the easier robots to do, Buster only. His weapon is super good, and you can get a special weapon on his stage. Ready? So, welcome to the desert. So, you got the bugs on the ceiling trying to shoot you, and then you've got these scorpions. Ouch. Also, I love the Pharaoh Man music. One of the best songs in the game. Mega Man 4 is good music, but it's not as good as like Mega Man 1, 2, and 3's music. Alright, right here. So, Beat's telling us to go down. However, if we get out the Rush Coil... Oh, darn it! <laughs> if you jump over that gap, you get a special uh, weapon. I guess I can show off the rest of the stage. These are Ladybug Propeller Copters. That's not their actual official name, but that's what they are. <laughs> and I'm out of practice, so bear with me. Is there a... Okay, X is slide. These are mummies. They further... <laughs> and they kill you and further heads at you. I can already hear the people saying, Why are you playing the Anniversary Collection? That's so bad! Well, I like it better than the NES version, because it doesn't lag, and the music doesn't, like, cut out at different parts. Plus, I like being able to play with a GameCube controller. 
I also forgot. The new Mega Buster, you can charge it up. I prefer rapid shots for the most part, but we will be using the charge beam at some points in the game. Alright, let's try this part again. Rush Coil. This time we're actually going to jump on top of Rush. There we go. We'll avoid the shots dropped by the little fireflies. Excuse me, I have a bit of a cough. And if we go over here... We get the balloon adapter. It's basically item number one from Mega Man 2. It's useful, and this warps us to the halfway point in the stage. And hey, bubble bats are back. We haven't seen them since Mega Man 2. And these guys are basically a good version of footholders, because it's much easier to control them. You're not actually in control, you just jump on and let them take you places. But they're much, le much less glitchy and much less annoying than footholders were. I just thought, I really, oh no, oh that's bad. <laughs> I do really like the interface of the Anniversary Collection, how you have quick weapon switching, and you can see your lives at all times. I think, I, I like it. I know a lot of people were really upset that the uh, jump and shoot buttons were reversed, which is a bit annoying. Not sure why they did that, or why you can't con uh, change the controls. I don't really know. It doesn't really bother me, though. It does have a few glitches, like specifically Mega Man 4, one of the levels gives you one less checkpoint than it's supposed to. But we'll get there when we get there. <sighs> that was close. And here we are, Pharaoh Man. So Faramon, Faramon, that move is very annoying, where he chucks the two globs of sand at you. He has another move, though. This move is the one you want him to do. Because then you can just time your jumps and shoot him like crazy. Yeah, you want him to do this for, like, the whole match. <laughs> Also, his weakness weapon isn't, like, it, in a way, it's, also, it's really good against him, but it doesn't deal any extra damage, if that makes sense. When we fight him uh, at the end of the game, I'll show you what I mean. That's a cool effect. You got Pharaoh Shot. This is the best weapon in the game. Probably, like, hands down. So powerful. Back to the stage select. Alright, we got the balloon adapter and the pharaoh shot. So, if you're going in the weakness order, Rain Man is going to be the one you want to do next, but screw that, we're doing Dive Man next. Why he's called Dive Man and not Submarine Man, I will never know, but whatever. Dive Man's good to do next, just because Dive Man is terrible if you do him with his weakness weapon. His weakness weapon is actually not what you want to do, uh, use against him. And we got these fish that just want to say hi. And we got Scuba and Mets, and these jellyfish fiends, which are indestructible. Ooh, thanks for the one-up. So Dive Man's stage isn't too bad. There are a couple of spikes, but it's not too bad. And time for the mini-boss. This is Moby Dick. He's not too bad. 
By the way, I should show off Balloon Adapter. So you just make a platform, it travels slowly upwards, you can jump on it. And it disappears after a short time. Then we got Pharaoh Shot. So Pharaoh Shot, you throw a glob of sand, and you can throw it up or down as well as straight ahead. But what's really nice is you can charge it up, and you can see there's a giant glob of sand above my head. That can kill enemies. It also has a decent amount of energy, considering it's a charge weapon much better than the atomic fire from Mega Man 2. And this is a new ally, Eddie. He'll give you a random power-up, and that was very nice of you, Eddie. Thank you. Eddie has a bad habit of giving you items that you have no use for, like weapon energy if you haven't used any. This is the stomper enemy of the game. He's pretty easy to take out, though. And now the water's moving up and down. And these manta ray enemies can be a bit annoying. If you're not on the same level as them. And who's ready for Moby Round 2? Take that, Moby. So, kind of a dirty little secret here. It looks like you would die if you go down here, but actually it's the secret passageway. And this is the other reason I wanted to do Dive Man next. Because if we do that, we get the wire adapter. The closest thing to the hook shot that Mega Man will ever get. Unfortunately, this takes us backwards as opposed to forwards, like on Pharaoh Man's stage. Yeah, the manta rays move towards you if you're not careful. Take that, Moby. Dicky Mo. If you get close to those bombs, then they will blow up. You also cannot destroy them. So this room, just be patient. Try not to hit the death spikes. Crud. That's the jerk move. Oh, look at me, I'm Romifrol. Oh, I didn't know the manta rays could backtrack on you. And here we go, Dive Man's Gate. So Dive Man, if you don't know what to do, will kick your butt really bad. The key? Keep your distance. Because if you're on the ground and he does a dive attack, so he'll do that. And if you're in the air, he'll start shooting missiles at you. But if you land, you can just shoot him down. If you're on the ground, however, he'll just keep dashing right at you. So in this case, it's very easy to kill him. You just shoot his missiles down on the ground, get a ton of shots in on him, jump over him, rinse and repeat. As long as you keep your distance, he's very easy. The thing is, so he's very easy with the Mega Buster. His weakness weapon is an extremely close range weapon. You do not want to get next to Dive Man, because he deals so much damage if he rams into you. Goodbye, Dive Man. I had to wait for the bubble to go up to the top of the screen. New weapon get! And we got the dive missile! So that's a homing missile. You shoot it, it locks onto an enemy, and usually kills it in one hit. It's, it's decent. The problem with Mega Man 4 is, uh, besides the Pharaoh shot, most of the weapons are kind of lame. Alright, who to do next? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do Toad Man next. I have to ask, what designer thought, I know, let's make Toad Man! Seriously, he's... Toad Man is laughable. His stage is kind of hard. But Toad Man himself is probably the most pathetic robot master in existence. So we can just slide through the main room. The rain pushes us back if we jump. So that can get uh, make for some tricky jumps. But we're out of the rain now. Also, Toad Man is really depressing music. This water just pushes you around regardless of if you're or if you're on the ground. Some very nice physics in this game, and also just the visuals in this game are really impressive for the NES. Which is something I really like about the Mega Man series, especially Mega Man 6. It's like, whoa, it's hard to believe this is an NES game. I believe it's mini-boss time now. Yep, giant snail. He'll open his eyes and then you can shoot him. But watch out, because he throws bombs and occasionally his eyes will come out at you like that. And boom, he's gone. See you later, you rat. Alright. Second round against Snail Man. It's a bit tougher because there are bottomless pits and water that's trying to push you into said pits. The snail, however, is still quite easy. But seriously, why Toad Man? Why not, like, Swamp Man? Also, this is where the checkpoint is on the stage. At least, actually, maybe I'm thinking Gemini Man stage. I could be totally wrong. Thankfully, that fish will dodge you. Alright, I've got next to no HP and zero lives, but it's okay, because Toad Man is pathetic. Literally, if you play it right, he will never even be able to do anything. He raises his hands, shoot him. Seriously, it is this easy. Toad man, for real. <laughs> I'm gonna hit him this time. Oh, I failed all 27 other times, but I'll hit him that time. Nope. Toad man does have other moves. If you shoot him while he's not raising his hands, he'll start jumping at you. And if you don't shoot him while his hands are raised, he'll make it rain, and that covers the whole screen and is undodgeable. But he's just so easy. <laughs> And despite the fact that Toad Man is absolutely pathetic, we actually get a really good weapon for that, the Rain Flush. It pretty much instantly kills all enemies on the screen. And Doggy! You got Rush Marine Adapter. The Rush Marine is not great. Thanks, Toad Man. Alright. Three down, five to go. I think next we will do Rain Man. Rain Man's stage is kind of nasty. It also introduces us to those bridges, which, when you step on them, start to disappear. And Wall Blasters! And this is where Toad Man's weapon really shines. Especially in this room. Or not this room. Next room. this room. Thank you, Rain Flush. It's such a good weapon. And it's time for the first of many, many, many bosses in, on this stage. 
Hippo Platterer. It'll shoot missiles at you. And the missiles have really tiny hitboxes in order to shoot them. But the hitboxes for them actually hitting you are pretty large. Let's use dive missiles against this guy. There we go. That's a spark spine! Despite the fact that it looks like it's a saw blade, those are actually electric sparks on top of them. And these, I believe, are Ring Rings? Or Saturn Seekers, depending on who you ask. I like Saturn Seeker better! Oh! Not today, Spine! Also, this part of the sounds uh, song sounds like angels we have heard on high. Gloria. This guy's an uh, irritating mini-boss. If you stand here, he can't actually hit you. But you can't hit him unless his eyes are open. So it's just irritating. And sometimes he does that, which is just annoying. Round two against the hippo platter. Hey, where did my health go? Lame. Oh, I can show off the wire adapter now. Bam! Climb up to the ceiling. Hey, Eddie, what do you have for me? Thank you. I was hoping for that. Or an extra life. Both would be good. These guys are annoying, because if they get close enough to you, they just turn into bumper car mode and they, you can't kill them. So these bridges are different from the first bridges because they actually disappear on the end you're trying to run towards. Oh, thank you! You are a gentleman and a scholar. The problem is Rain Man is not as easy as the other Robot Masters we've faced thus far. Oh, no! Oh! Drop help for me? Oh, you are a gem! You are a gem. Oh my gosh, such generosity! I, I'm not worthy. So this next guy is very annoying because he actually can hit you. There's no safe point. If you have Bright Man's weapon, these guys are much easier, but alas, we do not. Alright, I'm going to see if I can beat Rin Man with the Buster only. I probably will not. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. So yeah, Rain Man. Alright. Ow. So he does have a very definitive pattern he follows. Froze a rain, jumps, froze a rain, then walks over to where you are. Rinse and repeat. But we're going to do him the easy way. We got Pharaoh Shot. Take that. Ferro Shot is really good because, like, a fully charged Ferro Shot will deal a lot of damage to any boss. Just about. So it's a very nice weapon. And for this, we get. Rain Boomerang. Despite the lame sounding name, Rain Boomerang is actually a very good weapon because, like, half the bosses in the Cossack stages are weak to it. So it's actually very useful. And then there were four. And that's where we're going to leave the episode off for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope you tune in next time where we will finish up the Robot Masters. Have a great day and God bless.